It is 7.39 and a warm welcome back everybody. Now police believe they are moving in the right direction in their investigations into uh, the murders of five middle-aged homeless men in Pretoria. The men were all killed in a similar way over the past month and a source close to the investigation says a high-level task team is working around the clock to apprehend the suspect or even suspects. Now police refuse to confirm whether the murders uh, may be the work of a serial killer. And all the victims are male, they're middle-aged, and live on the streets. They were all attacked at night and stabbed in the upper part of the body. Now, does this string of murders point to the work of a serial killer? And to find out, we have invited forensic psychologist Dr. Gerard Labuskagni. Dr. Labuskagni, very good morning and welcome. Hi, morning. First of all, before we delve deeper into this conversation, uh, how do we define a serial killer? Does it have to do with the number of bodies discovered, mm. uh, where, or with the manner or the fashion they were killed? Uh, I mean, with the information that's been mm. given so far, uh, the, what's the possible profile of the person uh, who's accused of doing these things? Yeah, well, basically there's lots of definitions, but perhaps the most frequently used one is the one that came out of the 2005 FBI symposium on serial murder, where experts from throughout the world were invited to come to con some kind of consensus. And essentially they boiled it down to it's two separate, at least two separate murders committed by the same individual. That's the core criteria for something to be called a serial. And then, of course, you get the, the little different sort of subtypes. Yeah. And uh, what are the chances that there could be more than one uh, serial killer on the news? Do so, so serial killers work solo or they team up at some point? Yeah, so typically in South Africa and throughout the world, you're going to find it's, it's a sole person acting by themselves. And that has a lot to do with their own development of their fantasies and their urges that brought them to the point of wanting to, to go out and kill people. It's very difficult to find another person who matches those same desires that, that you have. So we have had incidences where you've had two, two suspects operating together, uh, a couple of those in our history in South Africa and throughout the world. <clears throat> but that's definitely sort of the, the, the exception rather than the rule. So just looking at the manner the, the, the homeless people were killed, do you mm -hmm. get a sense that uh, it could be one person? Um, yeah, and I think it's, it, it could it be more, of course. But the, let's rather start with what's the most likely. And the most likely scenario is it's going to be probably uh, one individual responsible for these crimes until we have evidence to the contrary. And why are police refusing to say that uh, it's actually a serial killer? Yeah, look, I mean, if you look at it, what, one of the strongest things we look at when we just get, try to get warning signs that we have a serial is the geographic location of the bodies, and we have that here, very small geographic location, the victimology being similar, and of course the type of wounds inflicted on the body. And if you've got that combination of three issues, you usually would say, let's rather treat this as a serial until we have information to the contrary. Um, why don't the police want to make it known? There can be various reasons. And for me, it's really not important whether you call it a serial killer or, or, or not. Um, as long as you are taking the proper steps to actually investigate it uh, along the lines that would be beneficial if it was a serial murder investigation. And that does seem to be what they've done. They've formed a task team, and that includes people from my old unit, the investigative psychology section, which are world experts on dealing with serial murder cases. And as long as you've got that team of people together, leave them alone to do what they need to do. Don't let generals and higher up people get involved in the investigation. Leave it up to the experts with the necessary resource. You'll have the best chance of solving the case. And, yeah, and, and having said that, I mean, upon determination of, of whether this is the work of a serial killer or not, does it affect the way police uh, conduct their own investigation? It, it does, um, for various reasons. I mean, we know serial murderers have certain patterns of behavior, certain ways of doing things, uh, which we would then use investigatively to the advantage of the investigation. Um, and, of course, you know if you find one person, you've solved five cases. Uh, if you have five individual suspects, of course, you've got five different people you have to try and locate. So definitely knowing that it's a serial, applying, and, and again, South African Police Services has, has a world-renowned rec reputation for solving serial cases. If we just do the basics, which we would normally do in any serial case, then, then we will be quite, I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be success in the investigation. But why would someone target the homeless, though? Yeah. It is an unusual target group. I'm, I'm trying to think back in my, I've worked on over 110 murder series in my time in the police, and I think maybe one of the series had some homeless people as victims. Victims. It's not your typical modus operandi. Typically, it's targeting females, and typically, there's a sexual motive. But that doesn't mean it's not serial just because it's not the standard victimology. And in fact, in 2005, we had a Timber Villacazi who was murdering people in that same area. In fact, Magnolia Del Park was where some of his victims were found. Um, he was arrested and sentenced in 2015 to, to life sentences, so it couldn't be him operating again. And some of his victims were homeless people. So it's not unheard of, it's not the typical victimology, and that choice of victims will be up to that individual suspect himself. And presuming that uh, this is indeed the work of a serial killer, mm -hmm. what should police be on the lookout for in order to narrow down their search in the area? 
Um, obviously, they'll take the basic steps of trying to identify the victims who lost or the victims and any witnesses that came forward who noticed something. And what we typically find, and I think this is what has happened, is that once it becomes known in the, in the media or there's a lot of attention around the fact that there's a serial, other people come forward, either who were attacked by the suspect and for some reason managed to get away or the suspect didn't kill them, and those people bring valuable information to helping solve the case. So you'll want to find out those types of victims who might have information. Also, of course, there might be bodies going backwards in, in, in chronological time before the current ones that we're aware of. And, and one of the steps would be to try and find out in the broader ju jurisdictions around that area where there are other bodies, because those might have some valuable information attached to them that could help us obviously solve these cases. Are there any problems with the way the media are covering <coughs> such stories? I mean, is there a possibility that uh, the way they cover these stories could create uh, perhaps mm. copycat killers? Well, we've never had copycat killers in South Africa, so I think it's, m it's more of a Hollywood type of thing. We have had instances in the past where a suspect was raping and killing a woman, for example, and then you get an opportunistic husband who decides that he wants to get rid of his own wife, uh, kills her, and leaves her body in that same geographical area, hoping that it will be included as part of the series. And those are usually quite quickly excluded because of the, the, the suspect doesn't have the details of the series and exactly what happened to those victims. So those tend to be uh, excluded quite quickly as not being part of the series. But someone, for example, who is inspired suddenly to go out and become his, commit his own murder series. We've never had that, so it's not impossible, but that shouldn't be a first sort of conclusion that these are copycat killers operating. You know, I've had a conversation, a brief conversation rather, with uh, someone who is a student in psychology, and she was of the view that, you know, some of these homeless people can be territorial mm -hmm. in, in their nature. So do you think that had to do with this kind of uh, killings, that someone mm -hmm. maybe was per perhaps aggrieved with some of the fellow, uh, the fellow homeless people that mm -hmm. uh, he, he lives with? It is possible, but again, if it's one person, he's still a serial, murder, a serial murderer. He's just motivated by a different reason compared to the Moses Satola type of serial murderer who's motivated purely by sexual reasons. Um, so it is possible, but again, to, to say is this not perhaps a general pattern of behavior amongst homeless people when people start to move into the territory, then we would expect that amongst homeless people, it's common to have them being murdered. If that was a homeless person's uh, dispute resolution mechanism. Yeah. But if you suddenly have five taking place in one time, it's more likely it's, it's one person until we have evidence to the contrary. And again, that wouldn't stop them from being referred to as a serial murderer. You know, I've, I've watched so many movies and uh, TV series and serial killers are portrayed in movies as people who, I mean, people who've got sexual motives, as it mm -hmm. were. Yeah. Uh, to what degree is this true, especially in the yeah. South African context? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the mo most people's understanding of serial murder, as you say, from the media. But definitely in my own experience, the majority of cases I worked on, there was sexual elements to the crimes, rape of the victim, leaving the victims naked, etc. So that is kind of what we see as the stock standard. But that doesn't mean that we don't get other types of serial murderers who are not engaging in, a, in an obvious sexual element with their victims. So yes, it's the common thing, but it doesn't mean it's no, not a series if we don't have a, a sexual element. The a key issue is multiple murders over time committed by the same individual. Dr. Lopez Gachny, we can't thank you enough. Thank My you so pleasure. much for your time. Thank you. Well, many thanks to forensic psychologist Dr. Gerard Labuskahni for talking to us about the profile of a serial killer. We'll have more in a moment. This is Morning Live. Let's take a coffee break.